Now sometimes on this channel it certainly does feel like the land of milk and honey and thread rippers and Turin and Bergamo and Genoa. A lot of exciting things and platforms. But one of the unsung heroes of the setup here is the stuff from Arctic. And Arctic has a new Freezer 4 USP5. So this is the socket that Turin and Bergamo and Genoa use. 12 DDR5 memory channels. This is a tower cooler that has the correct orientation, meaning that it's turned 90 degrees. And this is, as far as I know, the only tower cooler that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Noctua, a fraction of the price, and actually in my testing is very, very slightly better than the Noctua. This also fits in a 4U case. So cases like our Silverstone case that we took a look at before, if you're going to DIY a test or a lab system, 4U SP5 or two 4U SP5s on a dual socket motherboard. You can definitely do that. We've been using the SP3 version of this for our Threadripper and, uh, you know, Milan based builds, but also fans. We've got the unusual fans like the P8 Max. So this is a 500 to 5000 RPM fan that is 5.3 millimeters of pressure. It's 12 volts DC, 0.19 amps. 40 centimeter cable length. This is an 80 by 80 millimeter fan. So this is what you typically would have in a 2U server. But they've also got the 8038 10K, also 80 millimeters. But look at this madness. This is a 1.3 amps. And so this will move an absurd amount of air. So I'm, I'm telling you that not just can you get the P12 PWM, look, $10 from Micro Center. I'm so much of a, a, an Arctic fan, I don't bum a bunch of crap from them. And uh, the 140 millimeter, the P14, but they've also got a new P14 Max for the six year warranty engineering that goes hard. Arctic really is killing it with all of their cooling solutions up and down the entire stack. Now, while I bought a bunch of these, Arctic did send me a few of these that are a little bit more esoteric. I mean, this fan has a fan inside it. There's a fan in the hub here to help cool the motor because when this thing is dissipating 1.3 amps, well, that's gonna generate a fair bit of heat. And so this helps move some air over the motor. Although it does come with stickers, so you can put a sticker over the fan depending on what your specific usage requirements are. Also included in the box are actual fan mounting screws. Although again, depending on what you're doing, it may not make sense to use those. We recently did a video on DIYing your own 25 gig NAS setup from trash. One of the things there was, hey, you could take an old super micro chassis where the power supplies might only be 500 or 750 watts because the thing is 15 years old and you can run an AM5 motherboard in that, which is very low power. You could replace the fans with this stuff inexpensively and have a new lease on life, literally six years. Six year guarantee, fan dust and nastiness and grit and grime and everything, you're gonna, you're gonna neglect it. We both know that. Six year warranty, that's, that's what you need. Oh yeah, the HL15, remember the HL15? I've got the HL15 that has a 128 core Bergamo processor. That was one of the first SP5 prototypes from Arctic. They reached out and they said, here, have these are all really well put together and launched now and fully available for SP5. But I've been running one of these probably longer than just about anybody. And I was probably one of the first people to test these with the 500 watt AMD CPUs or 500 watt configuration for Turin. And guess what? They work fine. Oh, and uh, you know, in this epic thing that we've got set up because I ordered another half a dozen of these, it turns out there's some really interesting things happening around ECC in, you know, competing platforms and with AMD. AMD is, is killing it in terms of system reliability, memory speed, and compatibility, and that's going to be a story for a whole other day. But if you work at a company that uh, has been invested in by one of the big funds and your IT group got a memo about running RAS daemon and gathering some statistics about uh, how things are running and getting that running over time. That's probably me, because I've been gathering some information on this for like a year. How reliable, like what, is it the CPU? Is it the memory? Where are the error correction things happening? And there's a lot happening with EDAC drivers and Linux and RAS daemon and all of that. A lot of those folks doing impossibly hard and amazing work and also people internal to, to AMD and, and Intel. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting, interesting situation. ECC is not anywhere near as simple as it used to be. It's vastly more complicated and a lot more interesting. 
That's going to be a video for another day, though. But we need to keep those CPUs cool because there is a correlation between how well your CPU is cooled and the error rate and fun, interesting stuff like that. And these, these, these tower coolers are over the top. That's a lot of fun. But that's a story for another day. So yeah, I'm not just a YouTube shill. I'm actually an enthusiast for this product because Arctic really, they don't have a marketing budget. They didn't spend any money on this. They don't spend any money on advertising or anything like that. It's just a really solid product. And that makes it sort of exciting to uh, do fun things with. And it doesn't take anything away from other successful products in the market. But Arctic is a cut above the rest, in, in my opinion. Almost all of the rest. And... Uh, there's no better value out there certainly right now in the server space and when you need something that's a little bit more specialty or if you're replacing noisy horrible fans in rack mount gear or in the case of ordering cheap crap from AliExpress putting the fans that belong in there in the first place so that your 10 gig adapter your 10 gig uh, SFP plus adapter doesn't overheat as I did in the two and a half gig I mean okay that switch is only 40 bucks plus the fan is like another $12 but still, that's a good deal for a 2.5 gig switch with a 10 gig uplink if you just have to add a fan. If you're thinking about building a Threadripper system or going beyond Threadripper and just going straight for one of those F-series CPUs for Turin, you really should give Arctic Cooling some consideration, especially if you're going for that 4U or small compact tower form factor because these are really nice. They're something else. Did I mention that we also use MX6 Thermal Paste? for basically everything because I mean these come with pre paste pre-installed but you know how it is around here I end up having to reply anyway this has been a quick look at some fun arctic products and also a look at arctic around the office in the wild legitimately for years and they are still going strong did you see Greg Crow Hartman's build server build guess what I used in that arctic tower cooling that is amazing all right if you have any questions are you going to do a build or you want to show off your build using whatever uh, let's, let's start a thread in the forum. Alright, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.